Hi, I'm Sue Rabadi. I started MedChatter Foundation to change the conversation between doctors and patients about the side effects and the long-term effects of the medicines we all take. Today we're meeting with Dr. Candida Fink, who is a leading expert in bipolar disorder. She's the author of The Ups and Downs of Raising a Bipolar Child with Judith Lederman and Bipolar Disorder for Dummies with Joe Cranick. I've asked Dr. Fink here to discuss a drug you've undoubtedly seen advertised, Abilify. Sales of Abilify topped $6.5 billion last year. It is the best-selling drug in America today. Dr. Fink, why are so many people taking Abilify? Are people that depressed? Well, Abilify is used for a lot of different things. It was first approved uh, as a medication for schizophrenia, what we call an antipsychotic. Uh, it then evolved into use for bipolar disorder. Um, and then uh, it was approved by the FDA for the treatment of depression when antidepressants alone are not effective. So it's growing in terms of the populations that are taking medication. That being said, there are about 16 million adults over 18 a year who suffer with depression. So that's a lot of people who are depressed and who may need something additional beyond the uh, single antidepressant to get well. With all the advertising that's going on with Abilify, uh, Bristol Myers, who owns Abilify, spent $30 million in advertising it last year. Do you get patients walking in the door asking for it? I certainly do. Um, it, the advertising is, uh, is everywhere. Uh, people come in sometimes joking about it. They feel a little silly. Some people come in very serious and are, you know, very, you know, uh, concerned about the advertisement or they were started on it and they're very worried about the side effect list. So the effects of the advertisement are very vivid to me. I see it in my practice all the time. I talk a lot with my patients about making the best decision for them and uh, not to rely on advertising. But that's certainly a big part of why Abilify is selling as much as it is, is because of the advertising. That does lead me to my next question. What are the side effects that you see? I mean, there's a laundry list of them in the package, but what are the ones you really see? So again, like most medications, there is that laundry list that you talk about, um, but there are some that pretty much come to the surface more frequently. One of the most common side effects of Abilify is called akathisia, which is a big medical word for restlessness, motor restlessness, the feeling that you are gonna jump out of your skin, that you have to keep moving. Um, and it's very common, and it sometimes gets a little better after you've been on it for a while, but not always. Um, so that's one of the more common reasons we stop it. Um, Another very important side effect is uh, changes to metabolism, changes to how we use uh, glucose and insulin and our cholesterol, uh, and it creates some risk, uh, an increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes, and it definitely carries some risk of weight gain. Um, that's probably one of the biggest things I see up front uh, is, is weight gain. It has less of a risk than some other medications in this family, but it is significant and it is real, and we do see people with weight gain. Other concerns that come up include sometimes people can feel a little sedated or tired on it. Often that's transient comes and goes within a few weeks of starting the medication, but it can, uh, it can persist and some people can feel kind of foggy on it longer term. Um, like any medication used for depression, one of the most important things we watch for is the uh, development of suicidal thoughts. Pretty much any intervention for depression and early treatment, including psychotherapy, can lead to increased rates of thinking about suicide. We don't know why that is, but because we're using this to treat depression, we have to think about that as a possibility, and we have to be monitoring for it closely. Lastly, like many medications that I use, uh, it can have a paradoxical effect in some people. It can create, instead of feeling calmer and more comfortable, it can create agitation and distress. So we do have to monitor for that. Those are probably the, the top uh, uh, side effects that I watch for and see in my practice. Well, there, those are some problems. Please visit Dr. Fink's website at finkshrink.org and read her blog, Bipolar Beat, at psychcentral.com. And please visit medshadow.org.
Thanks for watching today. See our other videos on YouTube and visit our website at medchero.org.